wanted to take issue with you, if I may. Of course. Please, on this question of career politicians, because I understand very strongly the point that you make. I also understand that a lot of people feel the same, but I really, with great respect, don't think you are completely right, and you paint a kind of caricature. Um, I was a soldier. Uh, I worked in the city of London. Yeah. Um, I have worked elsewhere in my life. I became a member of Parliament in 1983. I'm standing down at the next election after 36 years. I do not think of myself as a career politician. Uh, I joined the Conservative Party because I believe very strongly, and I still believe very strongly, in its ethos and its principles and its values. And from time to time, those get uh, veered off, course, inevitably by events and circumstances. Uh, but I think that to portray all members of Parliament as career politicians who are just in it for themselves is such a stupid and silly thing to say. Well, Nick, hang well, on, uh, hang most on. Of the people, no, no, most of the people in the House of Commons try to do a very good job, the best job they can, under very difficult circumstances. And the reason that we are all so bogged down in this dreadful European mess is because the country is split, the parties are split, Parliament is split, and it is very, very difficult to come to a conclusion that will serve what? best all the interests that we all know. What, Nick, need Nick, to be Nick, replaced. two two huge points you make there, all right? On the first point, I did not say that, I, that all members of Parliament were career politicians. I did say I meet people uh, in politics with different opinions to me who I've got great respect for because I know they're in it out of conviction. But surely there are just too many people who've reached the front benches of both the Labour and Conservative parties over the last few decades who have never... Yeah, you've been a soldier, you've worked in the city, you've lived a bit, you know. Uh, a lot of these people uh, have gone straight from Oxford into research offices and never never had a proper job well, in their lives. That, 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 not most of them, some of them. Too many. A lot of, uh, no, some of them might do. It's absolutely... How many working class people, Nick, are, how, many working, how many working class people are there now in the House of Commons compared to when you went there back in 1983? Uh, fewer than the were. That yeah, is yes, absolutely. And that's one of the points I make. I don't see that that really is quite the point. The point is that you were always going on about people who've had a real job. Yeah. I mean, you were a commodity... Right, so it's hardly a real job. Well, I don't um, know. I hang on a second. I you, think. You, no, 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 no. You why hang on not? A second. You paint why not? This completely narcissistic picture of 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 members of Parliament of the establishment of everything else. You're you're you are right, and I agree with you, Nigel, in the serious points that you make about the need for constitutional reform in this country. But Good. this country has always succeeded because our reforms have evolved. We don't go in for revolution. And what we need in this country now is a bit more stability, a bit more humility, and a bit more understanding to get to the position where we can honour the referendum, <laughs> where we do leave as the people voted to leave, but we leave in an orderly and sensible way.